a Wikivide documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Chevy Chase Cornelius Crane, Chevy Chase is an American actor, comedian and writer. Born into a prominent New York family, Chase worked a variety of jobs before moving into comedy and began acting with National Lampoon. He became a key cast member in the first season of Saturday Night Live, where his recurring Weekend Update segment soon became a staple of the show. As both a performer and writer, he earned three Primetime Emmy Awards out of five nominations. Chase had his first leading film role in the comedy Foul Play, earning two Golden Globe Award nominations. He is further known for his portrayals of Clark Griswold in five National Lampoon's vacation films and Irwin, Fletch, Fletcher in both Fletch and Fletch Lives. Other prominent titles include Caddyshack, Seems Like Old Times, Spies Like Us, Three Amigos, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, Orange County, and Hot Tub Time Machine. He has hosted the Academy Awards twice and briefly had his own late-night talk show. The Chevy Chase Show. He played the character Pierce Hawthorne on the NBC comedy series Community from 2009 to 2014. Family Cornelius Crane Chase was born on October 8, 1943 in Lower Manhattan, New York, and grew up in Woodstock, New York. His father, Edward Tinsley, Ned, Chase, was a prominent Manhattan book editor and magazine writer. His mother, Kathleen Parker, was a concert pianist and librettist who was the daughter of Admiral Miles Browning, most notable for serving as Rear Admiral Raymond Day, Spruance's chief of staff on the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise at the Battle of Midway in World War II. Kathleen was adopted as a child by her stepfather, Cornelius Vanderbilt Crane, heir to the Crane Company, and took the name Kathleen Crane. Chase's paternal grandfather was artist and illustrator Edward Lee Chase, and his great-uncle was painter and teacher Frank Swift Chase. His maternal grandmother, Kathleen, was an opera singer who performed several times at Carnegie Hall. Chase was named for his adoptive grandfather Cornelius, while the nickname, Chevy, was bestowed by his grandmother, derived from the medieval English ballad of Chevy Chase, as a descendant of the Scottish clan Douglas. The name seemed appropriate to her. He is a 14th-generation New Yorker, and was listed in the Social Register at an early age. His mother's ancestors arrived in Manhattan starting in 1624, among his ancestors are New York City mayors Stephanus Van Cortland and John Johnston. The Dutch Schuyler family, through his ancestor Gertrude Schuyler, the wife of Stephanus Van Cortland, John Moran Scott, general of the New York militia during the American Revolution, Anne Hutchinson, dissident Puritan preacher and healer, and Mayflower passengers, and signers of the Mayflower Compact from England, John Howland, and the Pilgrim colonist leader and spiritual elder of the Plymouth Colony, William Brewster. According to his brother John, as a child, Chase vacationed at Castle Hill, the Crane's summer estate in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Chase's parents divorced when he was four. His father remarried into the Folgers' coffee family, and his mother remarried twice. He has stated that he grew up in an upper-middle-class environment and that his adoptive maternal grandfather did not bequeath any assets to Chase's mother when he died. In a 2007 biography, Chase stated that he was physically and psychologically abused as a child by his mother and stepfather, John Sedequist. Both his parents died in 2005. Education and Music Chase was educated at Riverdale Country School, a boarding independent school in the Riverdale neighborhood of New York City. Before being expelled, he ultimately graduated from the Stark Bridge School, an independent boarding school in the town of Stark Bridge, Massachusetts. He then attended Haverford College during the 1962-1963 term, where he was noted for slapstick comedy and an absurd sense of physical humor. During a 2009 interview on The Today Show, he ostensibly verified the oft-publicized urban legend that he was expelled for harboring a cow in his fourth-floor room, although his former roommate David Felsen asserted in a 2003 interview that Chase left for academic reasons. Chase transferred to Bard College in Annandale on Hudson, New York, where he studied a pre-med curriculum and graduated in 1967 with a Bachelor of Arts in English. Chase did not enter medical school, which meant he would be subject to the military draft. 
Chase was not drafted when he appeared in January 1989 as the first guest of the just-launched late-night Pat's Ajax show. He said he had convinced his draft board he deserved a 4F classification by, falsely claiming, among other things, that he had homosexual tendencies. Chase played drums with the college band The Leather Canary, headed by school friends Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Chase has called the group, a bad jazz band. Becker and Fagan later founded the successful group Steely Dan. Chase has absolute pitch. He played drums and keyboards for a rock band called Chameleon Church, which recorded one album, The Emgem Records before disbanding in 1969. To give the album a more soft rock sound, producer Alan Lauber made several alterations in the mixing, including the muting of Chase's bass drum, and Chase was reportedly incensed when he heard the final mix. Before fame, Chase worked as a cab driver, truck driver, motorcycle messenger, construction worker, waiter, busboy, fruit picker, produce manager in a supermarket, audio engineer, salesman in a wine store, and theater rusher. Early career Chase was a member of an early underground comedy ensemble called Channel One which he co-founded in 1967. He also wrote a one-page spoof on Mission, Impossible for Mad magazine in 1970 and was a writer for the short-lived Smothers Brothers TV show Comeback in the spring of 1975. Chase made the move to comedy as a full-time career by 1973, when he became a cast member of the National Lampoon Radio Hour. A syndicated satirical radio series, The Lampoon Radio Hour also featured John Belushi, Jill Radner, Bill Murray, and Brian Doyle Murray, all of whom later became not ready for primetime players on NBC Saturday Night. Chase and Belushi also appeared in National Lampoon's off-Broadway review Lemmings, a sketch and musical send-up of popular youth culture. He appeared in the theatrical release The Groove Tube which was directed by another co-founder of Channel One, Ken Shapiro, featuring several Channel One sketches. Saturday Night Live Chase was one of the original cast members of Saturday Night Live, NBC's late-night comedy television show, beginning in October 1975. During the first season, he introduced every show except two with, Live from New York, It's Saturday Night. The remark was often preceded by a pratfall, known as the Fall of the Week. Chase became known for his skill at physical comedy. In one comedy sketch, he mimicked a real-life incident in which President Gerald Ford accidentally tripped while disembarking from Air Force One in Salzburg, Austria. This portrayal of President Ford as a bumbling klutz became a favorite device of Chase, and helped form the popular concept of Ford as being a clumsy man. In later years, Chase met and became friendly with President Ford. Chase's physical stunts led to at least one self-injury. Chase was the original anchor for the Weekend Update segment of SNL, and his catchphrase introduction, I'm Chevy Chase, and you're not, became well known. His trademark conclusion, good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow, was later resurrected by Jane Curtin and Tina Fey. Chase also wrote comedy material for Weekend Update. For example, he wrote and performed, the news for the hard of hearing. In this skit, Chase would read the top story of the day, aided by Garrett Morris, who would repeat the story by loudly shouting it. Chase claimed that his version of Weekend Update would later be the inspiration for other news satire shows such as The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. Chase also performed in other skits on SNL including a recurring role as the Land Shark, a parody of the blockbuster movie Jaws. His racially charged word association skit opposite Richard Pryor from SNL's first season is frequently cited by television critics as one of the funniest skits in the show's history. Chase was committed contractually to SNL for only one year as a writer, and became a cast member during rehearsals just before the show's premiere. He received two Emmy Awards and a Golden Globe Award for his comedy writing and live comic acting on the show. In Rolling Stone's February 2015 appraisal of all 141 SNL cast members to date, Chase was ranked 10th in overall importance. Strange as it sounds, Chase might be the most underrated SNL player, they wrote. It took him only one season to define the franchise. Without that deadpan arrogance, the whole SNL style of humor would fall flat. In a 1975 New York Magazine cover story, which called him the funniest man in America, 
NBC executives referred to Chase as the first real potential successor to Johnny Carson, and claimed he would begin guest hosting The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson within six months of the article. Chase dismissed chatter that he could be the next Carson by telling New York, I'd never be tied down for five years interviewing TV personalities. In fact, Chase did not even appear on the program until May 4, 1977, when he was promoting a prime time special for NBC. Carson later said of Chase, he couldn't add liver fart after a baked bean dinner. Chase acknowledged Ernie Kovacs' influence on his work in Saturday Night Live, and he thanked Kovacs during his acceptance speech for his Emmy Award. In addition, Chase spoke of Kovacs' influence on his work in an appearance in the 1982 documentary called Ernie Kovacs, Television's Original Genius. Leaving SNL In late 1976, in the middle of the second season, Chase became the first member of the original cast to leave the show, while he landed starring roles in several films on the strength of his SNL notoriety, he asserted that the principal reason for his departure was his girlfriend Jacqueline Carlin's reluctance to move to New York. Chase moved to Los Angeles, married Carlin, and was replaced by Bill Murray, although he made a few appearances on the show during the second season. Chase later hosted SNL eight times through 1997. He appeared on the show's 25th anniversary special in 1999, and was interviewed for a 2005 NBC special on the first five years of SNL. Later appearances included a Caddyshack skit featuring Bill Murray, a 1997 episode with guest host Chris Farley, as the Land Shark in a Weekend Update segment in 2001, another Weekend Update segment in 2007 and in Justin Timberlake's monologue in 2013 as a member of the Five Timers Club, where he was reunited with his three amigos co-stars Steve Martin and Martin Short. He also participated in the 40th anniversary special in February 2015. Film Chase's early film roles included Tunnel Vision, the box office hit Foul Play, and Oh! Heavenly Dog, the role of Eric Otter Stratton in National Lampoon's Animal House was originally written with Chase in mind, but he turned the role down to work on Foul Play. The role went to Tim Matheson instead. Chase said in an interview that he chose to do Foul Play so he could do real acting for the first time in his career instead of just doing shtick. Chase followed Foul Play with the successful Harold Ramis comedy Caddyshack in 1980. That same year, he also reunited with Foul Play co-star Goldie Hawn for Neil Simon's Seems Like Old Times, and released a self-titled record album, co-produced by Chase and Tom Scott, with novelty and cover versions of songs by Randy Newman, Barry White, Bob Marley, The Beatles, Donna Summer, Tennessee Ernie Ford, The Trogs, and The Sugar Hill Gang. Chase narrowly escaped death by electrocution. During the filming of Modern Problems in 1980, during a sequence in which Chase's character wears landing lights. As he dreams that he is an airplane, the lights malfunctioned and electrical current passed through Chase's arm, back, and neck muscles. The near-death experience caused Chase to experience a period of deep depression, as his marriage to Jacqueline had ended just prior to the start of filming. Chase continued his film career in 1983's National Lampoon's Vacation, directed by Ramis and written by John Hughes. He married Janie Luke in 1982, and in 1985, he starred in Fletch, the first of two films based on Gregory McDonald's Fletch books. Chase joined SNL veterans Steve Martin and Martin Short in the Lorne Michaels-produced comedy Three Amigos, in 1986, declaring in an interview that making Three Amigos was the most fun he had making a film. The trio hosted SNL that year the only time the show has had three hosts on one show at the height of his career in the late 1980s. Chase earned around seven million US dollars per film, and was a highly visible celebrity. He appeared alongside Paul Simon, one of his best friends, in Simon's 1986 seconds video for, You Can Call Me L, in which he lip-syncs all of Simon's lyrics. Chase hosted the Academy Awards in 1987 and 1988 signing on to the proceedings in 1988 with the opener. Good evening, Hollywood phonies. Chase filmed a sequel to Vacation, 1985's National Lampoon's European Vacation and then a third, 
National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, in 1989, which, thanks to its holiday theme, has become one of his more durable films, airing on NBC every December. He played saxophone on stage at Simon's Free Concert at the Great Lawn in Central Park in the summer of 1991. Later in 1991, he helped record and appeared in the music video, Voices That Care, to entertain and support U.S. troops involved in Operation Desert Storm, and supported the International Red Cross. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?